Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Going to be doing a little bit of work on the diesel today in the form of auxiliary lighting. Get a little bit lazy here, well I do anyway, with regards to having 24 hour daylight throughout the summer and then suddenly winter starts creeping up on you and you realise that that lighting project you put off needs to be done. But if you remember a while back I got sponsored by a company called Loyo and they sent me some 7x5 LED headlights for the Cherokee with signal lamp built in and I got those installed and I really like them. Still running them, I think they look great. I mean obviously it's in the eye of the beholder. Some people I've met don't like them, others do. I, I personally do like them. So I contacted them again and um, based upon our previous agreement, which was they get a month's free access to my, my OnlyFans account, um, you know, it seems to work, work this time as well and, and they, were, they were pretty satisfied with, with what they saw and decided to grant me access to the catalogue. They sent me these and um, I've already had these installed on my vehicle and full disclosure, there is an affiliate link in the description. Obviously, if you buy these lights through the affiliate link, I get commission and I was given these lights for free, um, but not quite free because obviously I do really like the look of these. Uh, it says on the website, 8,000 lumens, 50,000 hours operating time, IP68. They're three inch, but they're listed as three and a half inch because it includes the bracket and um, they're 60 watts. One thing I picked up just to go with these auxiliary lights is a plug and play relay kit just to support auxiliary lighting. These make it super easy and um, they also have a wire on them so you can kind of hook that up to your, um, your main beam. So when you flick the main beams on, what I'm gonna try and do is have these come on as well so everything comes on together and that'd be nice and clean rather than fiddling around with a switch on the dash so let's get installing these are the brackets i'm going to be putting them on i made these brackets a while ago in fact i modified them so the bracket originally came with this piece and this piece was directly welded there i've just added an extension and that's because of the snorkel and i wanted the bracket to look symmetrical I've decided to mount the relay kit on the side of the winch controller. It's going to stay dry here and it means I can get to the fuse and the relays really easily. Much like the relays on the headlight harness upgrade. But if you've never done one before, these auxiliary wiring kits are super easy. And it tells you what everything is on the side of the packaging. A positive, two earths and a blue voltage control wire. And this activates the relay, so you basically splice it into wherever you want to activate it from when you turn the switch on in the vehicle like the main beams for example. So very simple, this is all connected up now. Got an earth just here, that's the earth for the lights. The thin earth, I just ran it straight to the negative on the battery and the positive round here and it's all kind of tidy. Now I just need to figure out where to put this. This is the control wire that's supposed to be connected to the headlights. Before that though, I'm just gonna use some MIG wire to pull the wire through the void in the fender. I think it's going to be harder than I think it is. It's like my first time. Uh, what's that? What is that? There's water pouring out. Oh, it's all on top of the roof tent because I washed it. Oh. So I've wrapped that round quite a few times. Hopefully that'll work and I'll just start pulling that through. There she is. <laughs> Come on there. Go. The relay kit I'm using supports 480 watts and has two harnesses for extra lights. These cube lights are only 120 watts total, so I'm just going to use one of the harnesses for both lights. So I'm stripping back some of the sheathing part way up the wire, and I'm just going to splice this passenger side light in using some Duracell waterproof connectors, and then feed the wire back through the fender so it can be connected to the driver's side light. So using this blue wire, which we will hook up to the main beam eventually, it should simulate activating the relay and yeah, basically making this all happen. And the light turns on, that's good, but it's orange. In fact, it, it's just the signal wire that's turned on. So, my brain. Must have connected it up wrong. 
but I followed the diagram. Why'd you lie to me? So it's worth noting that the instructions aren't correct. It's actually the blue wire that is the LED driving lights and it's the brown wire that is the signal light which is it's not what it says on here it's it's the other way around so um now you know and now i know and now i must undo all of this again so i've got one light all wired in just one <laughs> that was a bit more work than i thought it was but to be fair the diagram was wrong and i would have got it right the first time if it wasn't but if you look the other side you can see that that wire with all of those connectors on it just runs inside the fender and it's using those Duracell connectors so everything's waterproof and provided all the wires don't move too much those Duracell connectors will stay waterproof. One problem that can happen is if the wire keeps doing this while it's in that connector it can break eventually just here and the wire will come free and then you get a short circuit but there is a fuse on this system so that's okay and also they're not going anywhere because I really had to stuff them in. You know what I mean? But one thing I did do was I did hook up the signal light on this, just future-proofing it, just in case I do decide to use it. It's very nice and it's very bright. And I like that because, you know, if you're at a junction and somebody's in their own world, you know, daydreaming, that might be the difference between them staying asleep or waking up and actually seeing your vehicle. But anyway, time to do the other side. And then all that's left to do is this blue Thing that's going to go somewhere on the main beams to be triggered and then maybe at the end of the video I do this I don't know shinies for life now I know what wires do what the other side is obviously a quick job plus less wires to feed through the fender now though it's time to figure out where to splice in the voltage control wire and at first I try it on the main fuse box which is obviously a fail because this comes directly from the battery pre-switch meaning the lights would just be on all the time. So I'm taking apart the light housing and splicing the control wire onto the wiring harness itself, which is post switch and should work. I guess we just put that back there. I hate electronics, honestly. They are just the worst sometimes. I need to sort some of this stuff out. I keep thinking I've done a good job of things and then I come back to them and I'm like, what is that? Anyway. Let's see if this works. Oh, finally, something worked. Better not jinx it. They look good. Little ditch lights, a little bit of extra light off-roading in the winter. That'd be good, actually. But maybe I should have a look at the signal light now. So I just spliced the signal wire into the positive wire that goes to the indicator lamps. I don't see why it would be a problem to have that hooked up as well and the other one. Some people in the last video mentioned things about a relay to do with the indicators and need it needing upgrading and I just don't know because I don't know because I'm stupid when it comes to electronics. I'm just going to do it. Well, the lights are all installed and they're looking good, but how do they perform? I've just got back from a test drive and first off I tested the signal light and what can I say about it? It's very bright, it's uh, very orange and that's basically what you want a signal light to be like. Um, and they're also a bit higher up, so perhaps that will kind of help catch people's attention because it's kind of not in the normal position. Well, it is on some vehicles, but not on the Cherokee. But they look great, very happy with it. They, they are blinking at different rates because you've got this one here, which is running off some other system in here. I think there's a relay in there or something. You've got bulbs here and LED there, and this is LED. So I'm guessing there's some issues with voltages, which is why the timing's off. Um, that's probably what people were on about in the video where I fitted these headlights and they said, you want to take a look at a different relay for voltages and stuff. So maybe changing these to LED um, will get things kind of um, synced up a little bit better, maybe not perfect, but if anybody has any ideas of, of what to do with the flasher relay and maybe some links and stuff, because I'm stupid with stuff like this, please leave it in the description because I'd love to take a look at it. But in terms of how the lights perform 
as ditch lights or little extra lights, cube lights as you're driving along the road. Obviously when there's fog, extra lights like this are pretty bad. Normally you've got to switch them off and reduce speed um, or have proper fog lights that are designed for that kind of condition. But when the road's clear and you need some visibility from the sides and a little bit further down the road, they're performing really well and I'm quite surprised. I've had a few variations of ditch lights on the Jeep now, some cheapo ones off eBay, uh, those bigger ones I bought, which actually cost me quite a bit. And there was always a lot of hood glare, which I'll say there isn't with these. If you look at the shots, you can see that the way I've got them angled, and because it's a focused beam, there's not much hood glare at all and, and it doesn't distract you from driving, which is great. So those are some big pluses and obviously they're bright too, about 8,000 lumens. So they're shining straight down the road and giving me a little bit of extra visibility. Now I will say that they're not true extra lights that you would run here in Sweden. If you look at a lot of the vehicles here, they've usually got four massive halogen lights mounted on the front there, almost all vehicles have between two and four of those big old lights, sometimes more. Nice rhyme there, just for, yeah, you know. But um, basically uh, the reason being is, is you've got to kind of drive like you're driving a truck in the winter here. You've got to think way further ahead because the stopping distances are massively increased because you're driving on snow, you're driving on compacted ice or compacted snow and ice. And the studded tires, be, them, be it that they're, they're very good, they're not going to save you if you're doing like 110 kilometers an hour and there's reindeer in the road and you don't see them in time you're not going to be able to stop and you're going to have a collision and they're going to get killed and you're going to basically have an accident your car's going to get totaled probably so you know you have to have extra lights really here if especially if you're going to go fast i mean with the speeds i drive these are probably adequate with the headlights but you know more light the better really so i think what i might do is you can see that gap below the roof tent there I don't like LED light bars, I'm going to say that right now, I, I, I just think they look ugly, um, but it's looking like a good spot to put an LED light bar, and maybe I might consider one, I don't know. Anyway, I've talked loads again, I hope you've enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, thanks to Loyo for uh, sending me the lights, obviously affiliate links and discount codes in the description, if you're interested, if you're not, you know, you're not, and that's fair enough isn't it, but thanks again, take care. I'll see you in another video.